Hello and welcome to the College Football Saturday Slate video. I'm your host, Matthew Mono for Lamps.com. Joined here by Jason Gilbo, Patrick Monin, and Jacob Wayne to the next game. And it's going to be our final game of the night, USC at Utah. I think we may have some more back and forth in this game. Jacob, I'll kick it off with you. USC, three and a half point road dogs. Do you like them? You like Rising and Utah to take this one? Yeah, I think I decided I was going to play Utah in this game like before the season started, honestly. Um, and I'm happy that Utah got killed last week, honestly, because I think you're getting better value than if they had won that game, you might be seeing five and a half, six on this line. Maybe that's a bit aggressive, but I think it would be a, a bit higher than it is right now. Um, the USC offense, let's start with the good. It, it's been as advertised. Caleb Williams has been pretty impressive with 14 touchdowns to just one pick. Um they're fourth in the EPA per play, sixth in rushing, 16th in passing. Their offensive line has been outstanding. But my biggest question with them has continued to be their defense, and they're 124th in rushing EPA per play allowed. So you look at the Utah offense, who they've started to find their footing on the ground a bit more. Tavion Thomas, despite the blowout last week, was awesome. Um, I really needed to see him get back on track after a couple of weird weeks with the injury, and I don't know if he was benched or what was going on, but... He got back on track, 18 carries for 91 yards. I think he's going to be a huge piece of this team. And they're going to play a lot of ball control football. And this Utah defense, um, they're still 34th in EPA per play allowed. Clark Phillips is a future NFL starter at corner. Uh, his matchup with Jordan Addison is going to be fascinating this week. And you also have a significant special teams gap for Utah. As they rank 5th in special teams on PFF and USC is 129th. You're playing at altitude in Salt Lake City. And this USC team is still untested to me. They've relied so heavily on these turnovers that are so unsustainable. They're, they've gotten a turnover on 25% of opponent drives this year. Um, Utah's only given it up on 8.7% of their offensive drives. I think they're going to take care of the ball on offense, run the ball super effectively, play good enough defense to limit USC from scoring too many points, and really take advantage of their home field advantage. And which should be a touchdown plus win for them, I think. Patrick? Yeah, I agree. I think Utah is going to be able to absolutely gash this USC team. And I also agree that I, I, I think the fact that they lost to UCLA last week is is good for this number and it's good for, for the side of feel like Utah because UCLA, that, that was really a bad matchup for this Utah team. UCLA, they're really solid in the trenches. They got a lot of big boys up front. They're a very physical team. USC isn't. They're, their defense right now, they, they aren't super special up front. They're 90th in, in yards per rush right now. Utah is rushing for five yards of carry. I, I just think this is a really bad matchup for this this USC defense. And I think Utah bounces back. And I, I, I do think this USC offense, they, they still have a lot to offer. But I do like that matchup with Jordan Addison. And I think Utah completely gashes this game. Ball controls it and, and wins outright. Jason? I mean, I don't have anything to add. Everything that I wrote down for this game has been touched on. Um, Jordan, Jordan Addison did come up limping and did was in the medical tent late in that game last week, uh, so that is something to note. And then, as Jacob mentioned, Clark Phillips, really talented corner, um, really really starting to play. I feel like he started a little slow to the season, then he's really, really come into his own the last few weeks. I also feel like teams are learning how to take Addison away from what I've seen. Um, I think that's another key thing for, for kind of seeing how Caleb Williams adjusts. Because I think over the last three weeks for the USC offense, I mean, obviously struggled on the road against Oregon State. Um, the Washington State game was fine. Um, and obviously some of their defense obviously picked it up. But, like, Arizona State, like, there were just some stretches that I feel like they're not going to be able to rely on because I don't think they're going to have as many drives and as many possessions as they do in those types of games because – as Jacob and Patrick both alluded to, they're going to be able to run the ball and control this game. And I think Cam Rising is going to be able to make some big-time plays, um, especially just because they're going to have to sell out against the run. There's just no way that they're not going to have to bring extra guys into the box. So it's going to open up a lot of stuff over the top. Um, touch on the altitude and playing at home. Utah on a, on a Saturday night is a really, really good atmosphere. It's a really tough game to play. And I think you're actually getting a really, really good number with this Utah team because... I, I think in, there's probably a lot of range of outcomes where this game is like a six and a half spread, honestly. Like if we saw USC drop one earlier this year, I think this team is is probably good looking to cover a touchdown. So I think you're actually getting a pretty favorable number here. You guys all know what's going to happen here. I'm picking USC plus three and a half. I'm ignoring everything you guys said. All good points, I feel. And I... This goes back to an argument Jace, Jacob and I have basically had literally every single week, which is USC cannot sustain the turnovers, and they sustain the turnovers. 
every single week. And I think they continue to sustain the turnovers because that's what they do. They don't turn the ball over and they cause turnovers on the other side. They, again, and it's not really anything they do on defense that's that's that is that special. It's just when you drive the football that many times and you're in such a high scoring game, USC knows how to do that. Lincoln Riley knows how to coach it. Caleb Williams knows how to manage it. Other teams don't. Other teams are human. They turn the ball over. I think that's what happens again. I think we see a very similar game to what we saw week one against Florida, where if Utah gets behind the sticks, they end up having to force something. They have to rely on Cam Rising. And I will take USC secondary right now against Cam Rising. I am a hater. I don't think he's a good quarterback. They are 16th in EPA per pass at negative 2.03. USC secondary. I know that sounds shocking, but they are. They will get gashed on the ground. They're going to give up points. That's totally fine. Caleb Williams is going to be able to score enough. I'll be fine with it. And, then, and that's, I mean, I guess, I guess that's my point. I think Utah will eventually have to make mistakes. Go ahead, Jason, raise your hand. Yeah, that EPA in terms of the defense looks good because look at the stretch of who they played. Like, that's my big thing with them. Tanner McKee, I, a great quarterback. Fresno State quarterback got injured that game, didn't play. Um, Arizona State, like, I've crapped on Emory Jones the entire time that we've been starting this video. And torched Washington. I He didn't because he didn't play. So, <laughs> so, like, I just, like, that number is so inflated because of, of their, their schedule so far. And, like, I know Cam Rising, like, I... I'm bummed because he didn't beat Utah and he had the red zone pick, and like I think that's kind of still stuck in our minds. But this has been the same Utah team that I've been backing for the last year and a half, and like this is a spot where I feel like you're getting a really, really good number on them. And uh, I'm going to bank it. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually win this game pretty heavily. Um, like I think it could be a pretty big statement game that like UCI USC gets like kind of a setback from. I think it's totally fair. I just uh, I I do not have faith in the Utah's defense to be that elite anymore. I think they're bang average and bang average against this U, against Lincoln Riley, Caleb Williams, Jordan Addison, Troy Di- like is not gonna cut it. It's I I like this more as a teaser. I like them at plus nine and a half because I don't see how Utah just escapes this game unless Utah the turnovers time. completely switch. <laughs> All right. I agree, and something I want to bring up, I just I just pulled these numbers as you guys were arguing. Um, USD, the opponents that they faced are really, really poor in giving the ball away. So this is in terms of opponent uh, drives that end in a turnover. So Rice, 130th, Stanford, 127th, Oregon State, 118th, and Fresno State, 111th. Now they play a Utah team that doesn't give the ball away. They rank 27th in terms of drives that end in a turnover. And that's sustainable to me because of good coaching, because of running the ball, and his good schemes, and pretty stable play from Cam Rising. I don't think he's an NFL player. I don't think he's some Heisman-level quarterback, but I don't think he has to be for them to win this game. I think this is a just a massive, massive step up in competition, especially on the road for USC. I don't think they're ready for it. Utah's been in these big games before. We've seen them roll in these big games before. They beat Oregon twice last season by a hefty margin. They hung in there with Ohio State despite missing some key players. They're ready for this game a lot more than USC is, and I think they're going to benefit a ton from being at home. I guess I just disagree. I really, like I love this. You guys know I love this Utah team last year. It doesn't sound like it's it. a completely different team. Completely different team this year. And, you know, they have been in big games this year, and they lost them. They lost to US, UCLA. They lost to Florida. And they lost, in my in my opinion, like the scores were closer than what the games were. And yeah, I, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'm underrating how good UCLA's offense is. I think that, that could be part of it. I, I mean, I was in the same boat. Like, I've, it, it took, like, I was on UCLA, and I think UCLA has kind of turned me like this offense is really good. It, do, it helps that they have, like, a 32 year old quarterback, but um, I do, like, I, I do think they were kind of the most horrific mismatch for him, and, like, that's why I didn't really like Utah, but. Um, this week, I feel oh, like it's totally different. The other thing I would say that, uh, is they got down in that game, and then they were trying to stack the box to, to slow down Zach Charbonnet because he was just ripping off these long runs. And as soon as they tried to load the box, they got they got killed over the top. USC has Travis Dye and Austin Jones. They've been fine. They've been solid. And their offensive line is pretty good. But they aren't the types of running backs you need to absolutely load the box against to stop. I think they're going to be just fine up front, and they're going to be able to commit more resources over the top to, to slow down the passing game. And this game's not going to get away from them in close to the same kind of a way that it did last week. 
I guess. I just think you have to dedicate resources to covering the wide receiver so Caleb Williams doesn't murder you, which opens up the game for die. I think it's going to be a reverse in this one. One more thing I want to add is Williams has six big time throws to five turnover where he plays this season, which like isn't impressive. Um, especially when you think about the defenses he's, he's had to play. And I don't know, man. I think he's good. I, I don't think he's bad. I just, I think he's a bit overrated in, in terms of like public perception of him. I don't think he's on the same level of Bryce, Bryce Young and CJ Stroud at all. And, um, I, I don't think that this, U, this Utah defense is outmatched at all. I think Caleb Williams is going to be a better NFL quarterback than better than both of them. So we will see what happens there. <laughs> Intense back and forth. We got Jason, Patrick, and Jacob all on Utah at minus three and a half. And once again, I'm all by myself betting against Utah. Let's see if it works out for two straight weeks. I got USC at plus three and a half. Again, I'll say there's a lot of bets we went over in this podcast. And if you're watching this individual USC at Utah game, there should be videos out for all the games we went over that I like a lot more. <laughs> but I do, I still am willing to put USC down because I do think they pull this one out or at least keep it within a field goal um maybe even heads to overtime or something like that all right all right that's going to wrap it up for the video thank you guys for watching as always you can click the like button if you like this one hit the dislike if you did not hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content like this click the bell if you want to get notified when our videos go up feel free to comment down below your favorite bets and uh, we'll see you for the next one very soon